Hey everybody, it's Mike with you here once again on the Sonex 413 channel. And today we're bringing you a video that has been often requested by viewers that uh, have seen me and Richie using our sweet little capacitor field chargers on some of the videos. And they really are handy. Richie and I love them. And, and uh, a lot of people have asked, how do you put one of these together? Uh, first of all, before we get into the actual construction, uh, let me just uh, put in a word for the simple way of doing things. And that is, if you're just getting into the hobby, uh, consider using the two AA alkaline batteries method. And just charge your plane with two AA alkalines. And... Uh, consider putting off building a charger until uh, until you're really sure you need one that, that you're seriously in the hobby and you want something more serious um, this is a full featured charger really nice and it's based on a, a couple of Banggood components the, the main circuit unit you can see in the lower left with the blue screen on it is a DC DC adjustable drop down converter and it's got adjustable volts and amps on its output and um, it, it's a very versatile little circuit it, it comes assembled uh, on that circuit board but you have to put together the uh, Lexan case and there, there are a few little issues with the, with the case assembly um, the circuit is 100% reliable so far. We've got two of these units in use, <clears throat> and uh, they've been working great. Uh, but the, the lucite or uh, acrylic clear plastic case that you assemble uh, has a, a fit issue on where the push buttons pass through the front panel. And... Uh, if you don't take care of it what will happen is uh, the buttons jam when you use them uh, physically mechanically the, the buttons jam so uh, Richie and I engineered a little fix for that and we go over that in the video basically it involves making the little plastic pieces of, of the push button assembly a little bit thicker so that they fit the slots better you'll see in the video um, all right, and then the other component from Banggood is that little red uh, three-digit LED voltmeter. <clears throat> and we use that to measure the output voltage uh, from the unit. Uh, and, and in other words, the voltage that the capacitor is, is taking up. Um, in the video, I go into a, a lengthy side track of how to modify your two wire uh, Banggood voltmeter into a three wire unit um, and, and the ex explanations in the video why we would want to do that. Uh, the, the point is Banggood uh, makes available now a three wire voltmeter which uh, you by having that, you don't need to do the hack and make your two-wire voltmeter into a three-wire voltmeter like I'm going to show you in the video. Uh, I'm going to leave that stuff in the video in case it, somebody finds it interesting or informative. But um, you, what you'll need for the project to do it the easy way is the three-wire voltmeter, which is going to be listed in the links below this video in the text description along with the link to that DC DC drop down converter. So the converter and the three digit LED voltmeter are the only components we ordered from Banggood. Everything else you see there is from the junk box, the little plastic box, some carburetor jets came in that box, um, the, the connectors, heat shrink tubing, hookup wire, uh, uh, a heavy duty diode there that's in the output leg of the circuit. We'll describe that in the upcoming video as well. <clears throat> but all of that stuff is from the junk box. 
So the only thing you'd really be ordering up is the the DC DC converter and the three digit LED voltmeter. Okay. Uh, now this unit actually has some nice other uses as well. Uh, for instance, it it in in general it's a very good DC power supply. It as the name implies, it's a drop down converter only. So you have to supply it with a little bit higher voltage than what you require to get out of it. But it's adjustable within a pretty good range, and the input is uh, amenable to a pretty good range as well. There's a, a spec sheet on the product page on Banggood, so uh, and they make different models with different ratings, so uh, you can check that out there as well if this one doesn't suit your needs. Uh, Richie and I only use these for capacitor flying, and we find it it's perfect. But as I say, there are other uses. So you could use it for a DC power supply, run a little radio on it or something, whatever you got. You could use it as an automatic battery charger. If you know the voltage, the float voltage that your batteries want to see and what the required charging amperage is, you can set up the parameters on that little screen and you can use it as an automatic battery charger. It'll taper off the amps as it approaches full charge and it'll even give you an indication of a full charge with the blue LED that you can see in the photo there. Uh, it's even got a USB output, a, a standard full-size USB plug uh, which you you could uh, use for instance to charge your phone at the at the flying field off of one of your flight packs. Um, and and it's, the circuitry has a built-in safety feature that if you have a voltage higher than 5 volts dialed into the converter and you try to select USB output, it'll give you a warning uh, message on your screen that the voltage is too high, so it limits you to 5 volts on the USB output. You could, uh, you could dial it up for less than 5 volts, and of course the uh, amps uh, are adjustable on that output as well. So that's a nice handy feature. I don't use that on my unit either. Like I say, I'm strictly using it for capacitors. And then one other thing I thought of that you could use it for is if you're a nitro flyer, you could use it as a glow plug driver. You could set up the voltage there and it would show you the amperage being drawn by the glow plug. You could note what a dry glow plug pulls down for amps and as the plug gets wet, like if you start flooding the motor, you'll notice that it draws more amps. So you could use that display to actually diagnose if you had a flooded engine. And also, if if you had a burned out glow plug, it would show you that by uh, showing you that the circuit wasn't complete. So it, it would make a nice little automatic glow plug driver too. So. Uh, with all that in mind, uh, oh, and one more note too, I think in the video uh, I mentioned some prices of the Banggood components and uh, they may not be accurate because uh, I think they're close or they may even be accurate, but the video was made several months ago of the assembly and they, they may have gone up on their prices. I have checked and the components are available still. So uh, if, if they become unavailable, I'll put a note to that effect in the text description below this uh, video. All right. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. I guess not. That, that covers the intro pretty well. Uh, let's get into a look at the layout and the features and the controls on this unit. Here we go. This big old 1300 milliamp lipo pack, two cell a series pack, that's enough for about a month's worth of capacitor flying, more than you'll ever need. And there's room for two of those packs in that little plastic box. We're going to feed that through a, a polarized XT60 connector to make it convenient to use our flying packs. This is the input end of the drop down converter. We're going to feed the voltage in there. It comes out on the right hand side and we're going to feed it up to that second row of components. 
first of which is this diode. Now that's there to provide uh, protection on the output side of the uh, converter and it can be sized according to battery or capacitor you want to hook up to that device. If, you, if you're just using little capacitors like, like we're using for the airplanes, that doesn't have to be all that heavy duty. Could be something from Radio Shack or the Auto Store. Unfortunately, that one came out of the junk box, and so I'm not sure the part number. On Richie's, we use one quarter of a full wave bridge rectifier. More on that in the video. Then we feed it through a three digit LED voltmeter. That's from Banggood, and that one comes with three wires on it. And we've talked about that a little bit earlier. Then we feed the voltage out through a little polarized two pin micro Deans connector makes it convenient to hook up different implements on the end of that. Then there's our charge adapter and a little close up of that to show you the dimensions that's how you build one. There's also some information on building this adapter plug on our build along video part one where we build a super cap plane on, on YouTube. Now that little red LED up in the corner what does that do? Absolutely nothing that just lights up and that's part of the uh, original junk part. There's the illuminated screen, display screen. On the lower right it shows you the amps being output by the device and just above that it's showing you the voltage and it can show you either pack voltage or output voltage. I like to show the pack voltage. Two little red push buttons there. Um, there's more about those in the uh, video upcoming. They have several actual functions. Uh, you can find out more on the Banggood product page about those. Hidden underneath, right behind there, that's where the little USB port is. On my device it's hidden because I never use the USB port, but you could hook it up. Right there is the uh, variable potentiometer to adjust the volts. There's the adjustment for the amps. Pretty simple. Then, um, well that's it. Let's go to the uh, parts being laid out on the table. Richie and I actually assembling this. Here we go. Bench with the DC DC power supply. And what we've done here is laid the parts out. The Lexan case parts um, we ahead of time peeled the paper off it came off pretty easily sometimes it, that can be a pain in the you know and then the circuit board complete there's no actual assembly to do there all the assembly we have to do is the case itself there are two little red push buttons and you can see some circuit board mounted push buttons right here and these plastic bits sit on top of each push button and you can hear that click now that's the way it's supposed to work these of course stick up through these little slots and you can see there's a lot of slop there that slot is bigger than it needs to be what happens is the push button slips down sideways past the the uh, past the little switch and uh, it won't return back up and it's jammed at that point you have to take the case apart and re replace the or reset the push button part um, if it fit had a better fit it would it would work better and I figured out a way to do that we'll show you that in a second the other thing you could do is leave these plastic red pieces right out of the equation and use a little dowel right down through the hole to push these two switches in the event that you need to use them. Basically they're only used during the initial calibration or if you want to um, um, set the display options. It, also you can turn the backlight on the screen on or off with, with one of those switches. So I would say go ahead and fix it. It's worth it. We'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple actually. Then over here we've got some nylon molded standoffs that are threaded and eight little pan head Phillips screws that um, is so that you can stack these together 
and the circuit board in the middle spaced off the Lexan by these standoffs. And then this little unit is a nice little heat sink. It's got a double stick tape on the back and that is to be installed on this integrated circuit here. Uh, and, and we're just going to later clean that with a little alcohol, prep it up, and then stick the heat sink right on there. But, let's, uh, I'd say electronically this has been a great unit. It works 100% electronically. The only problem is with these buttons and the fit to these Lexan cases. And um, that's something we can fix. Basically what we're going to do is make these buttons a little thicker and um, they'll fit in those slots perfectly. Here's my O'Reilly Auto Parts customer reward card. It's ABS plastic. Here's a little piece of it we cut off. Richie, rough, rough that up so we can... Uh, I like to glue, rough it up. Rough it up with some... Here, right on here so we can see what you're doing. And, uh, and I'll mix this up some five minute epoxy. We'll glue those little red pieces onto that plastic and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Yeah, just a thin layer of glue. What we're doing here, five minute epoxy. And that's like 020 thick ABS plastic. We're going to glue those push buttons to it and increase their thickness. When the five minute epoxy sets up, we'll trim them out and give them a little touch up. And we'll even take the red magic marker and uh, make, make that material match the rest of the button. Uh, that looks pretty good. All right. Let's leave a little room between them so we can trim. That's the ticket. All right. Let that set up. Five minutes. We'll do a little trimming. All right. Back into the construction. You can see here we finished reworking our little red push button extensions. And you can hardly tell. Well, you can tell a little bit. But they've been thickened up by about 20 thousandths. And... They fit now perfectly into these little slots here. We've got a perfect fit. They slip in and out and no resistance. So that's where we want to be with that. So we're ready to go ahead with assembly then. The next step is we've got this little heat sink and we've got to affix it to this component right here. Easy enough to do. We're going to swab it with some alcohol and then stick it on there just like so. We'll be back after we do that and we'll start putting the lex hand together. Roll it. Alright, now we've swabbed that component with a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol to clean it up. It's nice and dry. And Richie, if you can work over here so we can see you, man. Yeah. Peel it. Did you peel it already? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, it don't feel easy. But there's a layer of sticky stuff there. Like we said before, this will help it um, dissipate some heat. But if you're putting it in a heavy-duty application, you do need to install a cooling fan. And for a capacitor plane use, we're not even close to the limits. So don't sweat it. Just use the little heat sink provided goes right on there like so, nice and straight, away from the edge of the board, and a nice firm press down, and that's it. Yeah, installed. Doesn't it look nice, huh? She's a beaut. She's a beaut so far. Okay, so now we're going to get our parts ready here, and what we want to do is use this piece, this is the back or bottom piece, and uh, let's see, yes, and, and this is the bottom of the board that we're looking at here. So if you look at the little square cutouts, you can see they go over the blue terminal boards, one there, one there. 
and so we're going to install some standoffs on the plastic piece I'll show you how that goes the, we've got some uh, longer ones and some shorter ones here the shorter ones have threaded studs sticking out the longer ones have female threaded holes we're going to take the longer female ones and four of these screws and go mount them through these four mounting holes on the plexiglass we'll be back to you'll see when it goes together easier than explaining it there you go nice well you can see Richie's just tightening those up with his fingertips you're only threading those screws into a little nylon piece doesn't have to be super tight I would warn you against using Loctite on these or on any application where you're next to plexiglass like this because Loctite will crack and craze plexiglass. I've seen guys do it on motorcycle windshields, think that they're doing a smart thing by using Loctite and it ruins the windshield plexiglass. So It can also craze it. It will craze it. I did not know that. Yes, it will. Hmm. It will go crazy. Hmm. Okay, you can see he's got these standoffs installed, and those are all nice, nicely finger tight. Now we're going to lay it down this way, and um, we can. We know it's got to go in that orientation because of these blue terminal blocks line up with the holes. So now we're going to go ahead and lay that circuit board on the case assembly and we're going to fasten it in with the little male threaded studs and they go right through the circuit board and thread into the nylon receptacles on the other side once again finger tight probably good enough they're not going anywhere where are they not going Richie? nowhere oh. uh, did you say anywhere? I, I figured you'd tell us they weren't going to the moon. So, oh. Damn. Read the script next time, man. <laughs> no go pra to moon. No go to moon. Pra practice your lines, bro. Okay, there's... Now, he's got the four of them in there. And now, the other thing I didn't tell you is there's an interference problem between the push buttons and the... Uh, actually this last standoff that we haven't installed yet that's going to go in there but I've modified this one and I've cut a little extra clearance you can see the orange magic marker I cut away about a sixteenth of an inch there now when I install this I want that orange mark to point in towards the little push button switch and that's going to give me some clearance because it wants to contact this little red push button and we're also going to take and carve a little corner off of this if it ends up touching that other piece so let's put that together shall we sure yeah so it's yeah that one there goes through now if it doesn't immediately line up pointing the way you want You'll have to go loosen up that Phillips screw on the other side and, and move some stuff around to make it work. Where did we end up on that? It's right on the inside. Right on the inside, right where we want it. Okay. So now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to trim off. This is the switch that's going in that position. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to take. I did that. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm going to take that little plastic piece. And I'm going to cut this little corner off the top right there, about 20 thousandths of an inch right there. Just a wick. Just a little bit, and then we'll be back. Okay, hard to see, but if you look closely, you can see I cut off at a 45 degree angle, that little corner there. And that is going to go right next to that standoff and provide the little bit of clearance that it needs. So what we'll do is we're going to load these plastic buttons into these holes in the Lexan, apply it to the assembly and then go in with our four more screws 
and fasten it all together. And uh, we'll be back when we do that. Okay. Hit it, Rich. Okay, now Richie's loading up those little plastic button extenders that we modified. Trying to. Trying to. Well, it's a little, some of this stuff's a little bit fiddly, you know, when you go to do it. But I'll tell you what, uh, for the price, it's worth fiddling with it. Okay, so that now just lays down. You try to not lose any pieces. Maybe if I do it this way. Why don't you do it that way? It just goes together. Once you get it in the right spot, the it'll sit on those push buttons. Did it line up with the push buttons? Yes, look at that, huh? Look at that. Yeah, so now you drop your four remaining screws down there and again hand tighten them up. Nice job Richie. Boy, you, you got it on the first try brother. That's very good. Hmm. Alright, now we'll see if you get through the next bit. Well, You're getting it, man. I'm a model builder so I Okay, and that's where we ran out of video the other night, but actually a good place to break because as I recall, Richie was installing and tightening these last four panhead screws on the top plastic and in fact that completes the assembly. So that was a good place to break off. Right now I've got it sitting on the bench with a power lead XT60 connector that I can hook up my battery. Battery is a two cell LiPo, 1300 milliamp, 7.4 volt, two cell series wired. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do the calibration on this because actually we're all done with the assembly the other night. All we've got to do is calibrate it. So there are two calibration modes and there are two push buttons. If we hold the top button during power up, it takes us to the voltage adjustment or calibrate mode. If we hold the lower one during power up, it takes us to the amperage uh, calibration mode. Very simple. Once you dial in an adjustment and leave the adjustment on, on there for more than five seconds, it'll be then... Um, put into memory when you disconnect the power and next time you power up it'll that's where it'll be automatically in other words you only need to do this probably once in the lifetime of the unit so let's go ahead and do that we're going to hold the top button down I can feel it click and then I'm going to fish this together with one hand and we can see the power come up we've got some lights and things and the display is flashing volts and um, I've got this little voltmeter which I checked against my lab one and it is accurate so I'm going to use it to calibrate this one this one is showing us the battery input voltage here and that's what this is trying to show us too so uh, now I've got to make this number match this one I want I want it to read 7.50 with the two push buttons I can increase with the top button or decrease with the bottom button the displayed amount I want to go down so I'm going to hold the I'm going to click the bottom button hold it a little bit hope you can see it now we're down to 7.53 0.51 I saw 50 there it is 7.50 and if you're within a couple hundreds like that that's fine so now the displays agree and we've let it sit and ponder for about five seconds which is the minimum now when we power off our voltage is calibrated so I'll go ahead and do that power off our voltage calibration is done now our we'll do the amperage calibration and uh, as you can imagine it's hold the second button the lower one 
in as we power up. And there's our display. We've got power. And it's showing us minus 0.29 amps. Of course, there's nothing at all hooked up to the output at the moment. So we'd like it to read zero. So again, top button to increase, bottom button to decrease. We're going to increase till we get it up to zero. Clicking through. And there we have zeros. Which is the actual load because there's nothing hooked up on the output so it is zero. Now we have to make sure it stays that way for at least five seconds without disturbing the setting any further which we've done now so if I disconnect our amp calibration is done we're zeroed out. So the next thing is to uh, get the rest of the wiring for this and I've already actually done that I've made some pigtail and heat shrink some leads here and I'm gonna go ahead and install that on the output of the power supply and I'll be back after I've done that stick around <clears throat> okay so our units all calibrated and we're ready to do the little things specific to uh, using it for our capacitor charging. Um, let me explain the wiring. We've already looked at the input side of it, okay? And that's just um, an XT60 connector properly polarized and going to the input side here, the left hand side of the power supply. On the right hand side, positive and negative going out to a charger through a diode. Okay, that's there to prevent any backflow. And, and if you install a diode, you'll be able to use this as a LiPo charger, NICAD charger, whatever you've got. Anything that you know the desired charge rate and the desired float voltage you can dial it in and it's a full featured battery charger. Um, I recommend installing the diode, it's pretty easy. Uh, doesn't have to be any special kind, just make sure it's, it's heavy duty enough to withstand the largest batteries that you plan to hook up to the output. So, what I came up with here, of course, Richie and I, the only thing we bought was the power supply and the little three digit charger, which we're going to, or not charger, voltmeter. We'll talk about that again in a minute. There's more to that. But that's the only parts we bought from Banggood for a grand total of, I think, $11 for the whole shebang. And uh, we figured we'd find everything else in the junk box XT60 connector, some wire, some heat shrink tubing, a little micro Dean's connector to go out to the charging plug and the diode and you may say well that doesn't look like a diode well you're right it's a it's a full wave bridge rectifier so actually it's an array of four diodes let me show you what that looks like on a schematic diagram that is internally is actually four separate diodes and it, there's a terminal coming out in four spots that's why you see four leads on that and if you put AC voltage in at these points you can pick out po uh, positive and negative DC voltage here of course you can also just hook up to here through that and out here and there's your one diode that you need for this so we had it in the junk box and it's heavy duty enough so there it is with the triple redundancy replacement part built in anyway um, that will result in a little bit of a voltage drop on the other side of that diode uh, in other words 
at the aircraft at the capacitor so uh, we're going to want to put a voltmeter on this if we want to monitor our charge in the airplane we're going to want a sensitive voltmeter on this charging lead here which would just be this little unit we would attach it on there um, probably back here so we could put it inside the case that will work and in fact you could also use one of these if you're still charging with the little double A alkaline batteries you could uh, put one of these and and really quantify the amount of your charge and that's that's really nice to be able to do uh, the drawback to using it the way it is is uh, well let me just show you something here if I take a, a worn out 9 volt battery and show you how this works you can see it it's only showing 8.89 or something it's it's a weak worn out 9 volt battery 8.95 and uh, you can see it's it's sensing the voltage and it's also being powered by that voltage so what that means is it only works down to about two and a half volts uh, which is pretty close to the range we're playing with with the capacitors so when you're charging it up you don't see you don't see any indication on it until you hit about 2.45 volts and and then you can watch your voltage come up but at, at that point the display is not all that bright so if, if you want the easy way to do it that's it and I, I ran mine like that for a long time just hook the little voltmeter up to the same leads as your charger and read your charge amount right there from 2.4 on up and by the way only the red digit one can read down that low if you get a green or a yellow or a blue the voltage is proportionately higher so that they might not even work for this application so yeah if you order a red one it will work for you just hooking it right to the output there and I've shown that on the sketch downstream from the diode between the diode and the airplane you're going to put that little meter and it's self-powered in that case works very nice now what you can do is uh, hack this and split up the function so that you can oops earthquake so that you can power it with these wires with a sufficiently high voltage to give you good bright digits and you can attach a third wire and sense uh, uh, your, the voltage that you're checking and that lets you go all the way down to zero volts and have the, have the digits at full brightness at the same time. So that's a little bit of a job and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it though. Uh, if you, but it's a, it's a bit tricky and uh, I'd recommend if you're going to try this get two of these voltmeters so if you mess one up you got another one to play with okay be back in a flash show you how to do that okay here's how you hack the little LED voltmeter to make it work uh, all the way down to zero um, it's easier to see on a sketch than it is here in, in real life so I made a little sketch to show you what it looks like if you turn the unit upside down and look at the back of it you'll see it looks like that okay and uh, so we're looking at the back side of the circuit board there's the main the biggest chip the second biggest li uh, chip little one just to the corner of the biggest one there's a little tiny trim pot mounted right there with a little Phillips adjuster it's tiny 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 right below that is a surface mount resistor if you look at it with a jeweler's loop you see it says zero on it or zero 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 it's a zero ohm resistor in other words it's a little jumper you need to remove that and then over here where you've got the existing red and black wire there's an empty pad where you put a third wire and that's the sense wire so with the jumper removed and with the third sense wire added you now put power here sense your voltage here and it works all the way down to zero it's a great hack and it works but 
order two of them if you're going to try it because you may mess one up taking this surface mount resistor off is pretty finicky I put the point of a tiny soldering iron up against it and applied a little side pressure and when it reached the melting point of the solder it just flicked it right out of there and uh, <laughs> putting the wire on that third empty pad there was even a little easier so good luck if you decide to try to do that it works great though Alright, so assuming you did the hack to the voltmeter, you would then take and hook it up with the red and black going to the input side of the power supply here. So you're powering the voltmeter with the full battery voltage. And then the third wire that you installed goes to the positive wire out here on the charging lead. And that's your sense wire. It picks up the ground from the from the ground on the input side. You go, the ground goes all the way through the unit. So that's how that works. So assuming you've done the hack, that's you power it here. You hook up this as the sense, and then I'll show you how one works later on that. Now, um, assuming you've done all that, you're still not ready to go to the flying field because we've got to set this for uh, the proper voltage and amperage for our capacitor plane. So to do that I'm going to take our magic charging wand here, hook it up on the micro Deans connector and that's going to let us have access to that output here at the end of this deal. So we'll take and on, on my charger the bottom is positive here and the top is negative there's our voltage. That is the actual voltage going out to the capacitor, out to the airplane. Now, we're not, we're not in the uh, calibrate mode. We're in the normal mode. So if I turn this left-hand pot here, uh, this will adjust the voltage. They come from the factory set at 20 volts, so you're going to have to turn it about 10 turns before you get in the range of what you're actually inputting but once you get there you keep well, you probably can't see it but let's see I'm, I'm reducing the turning counterclockwise here and I can see we're down into the 60s now I don't know if you can see that I want to get down about let's see Still watching the output at the charger. I want to get it down to about 3.1 volts. That's the setting I like to use when I'm charging these uh, 10 farad super caps. I'll call them out because I know you can't see them. So right now we're 3.1, 3.2. I'm going to back it off. 3.06, 3.1 something. Let's see. 3.10, 3.06, anywhere in there. It's, it's hard to get it exact, plus or minus 5 on that, 0.05 on that. So, uh, well, I'm, no, I'm doing it wrong. What am I saying? Okay, I'm looking for the 3.1 out here on the charger. And what we're, the reason it's different is the power supply is giving us 3.1 here. It's going down through the diode. That's dropping it down. To, to this number. So watch the red numbers and as I dial this up I want 3.1 there. Oh, too far. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Oh, hard to get it. It's so, so finicky. And we'll take the 3.05. That's fine. Close enough. 3.05, 3.10, something like that. Alright, and that's our voltage. Now, we want to set the maximum amperage that, that we allow for our capacitor. Now, 
I'm using 10 farad Banggood doesn't give you performance specs data sheet or anything I looked up a, as they say a competitive brand and I think that the maximum charge rate is about one amp for a 10 farad a 2.7 volt cap um, so I still uh, I'm gonna set this up for 0.8 of uh, one amp in other words 800 milliamps and uh, that's what I've been using and it, it takes about 20 30 seconds to charge one of these which I know is a safe rate it, 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 if you're not doing it any quicker than that you're certainly doing no harm so to set the amps um, all you do is take a little piece of hookup wire and we're going to strip the end of it and we're going to actually use it to short out our charging plug give it a we're going to short circuit the output of this thing there's some copper wire and we're just going to wrap it right around both contacts and if you see what happens here the red light comes on and um, it, the amp display is showing us that it's putting out 2.2 amps at that voltage and so we're going to dial that down I want 800 milliamps Let's see. And it's going down 1 1.8, 1.7, 1.5, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, 1 amp, 0.9, 0.80, 0.80 amps that's 800 milliamps and since we are holding the output shorted um, the red light is indicating that the current limiting function is working it's limiting the output to whatever we put in there the green LED is displayed to show us that it is in the charging mode it's it's drawing down and if we were charging a capacitor we would uh, initially see it act just like this because a, a, a capacitor that you're starting to charge basically acts like a short circuit. It's got almost no internal resistance and that's the whole reason you need a current limiting power supply. You can't just use big old NICAD batteries to charge your cap uh, because you start burning wires and <laughs> melting wires. Okay, I'm going to take out our short circuit simulator here on the output and you can see what happened there the green light went out so there's no more charging load on it and the blue light came on which actually is telling us the charging is done so this is set up now for 3.1 volts at, at the charging wand at 800 milliamps now um, the only other thing we would do here is depend on which way you're going to install your voltmeter you'd either put it totally out here or you'd power it here and sense it from there either way uh, they both work and like I said before the, the voltmeter hooked up to your AA batteries works great too as a way to time your flights and limit your flight endurance okay so uh, let's see what we want to do now. I guess let's uh, show you a normal charge with, with a model airplane. Hold on. Alright, here's our little MIG. You've seen that before and I've felt that one. Alright, and you can see right here on the side, perhaps. Uh, the light's not that great, but there's a little hole right there and there's a little slide switch right there so taking our charge plug we're going to insert it in that hole right there and if we look at the action here on the display panel we see that it is in the current limiting mode with the red LED on the green shows us it's charging now the current limiting mode has gone off and we can see the amp load dropping as it approaches full charge and 
now the charge is down to only a hundred milliamps the green light goes out the blue light comes on that's all it's taking so we didn't even look at that with a voltmeter but we know that's a full charge let's just listen to it all right so that's how you charge that and of course if you've got a voltmeter installed it makes it even a little nicer I'll show you that now all these pigtail leads and everything are all lengths chosen to fit in the box we're going to install this in and it's one of these little plastic tackle boxes I've already cut notches in it to make everything fit and the wire lengths and everything are all suited for this and I'm not going to take the time to put it in but just to give you an idea it's going in like that and there's room in here for a 1300 lipo there's actually room for two of those in there and then the little voltmeter is going up in the corner let me show you the one that we've already got finished and the one we're building is basically a duplicate so this is how it looks going to the field open it up there's room in here for the charging cord this is the polarized connector where you hook it up let's go ahead and hook up the battery to this one Oop, earthquake I gotta find a, a, a real tripod for that camera I guess okay so there we are it's showing us um, 3.08 volts close enough to our desired 3.1 we're going to take and put the charge wand into the polarized connector here and then there's a little slot in the box that we can lead it out and close it in case there's a little fog or dew out there so now this is um, ready to actually apply a charge to it where's our little MIG now this time we'll actually be watching the red digits and we can see how much of a charge is actually in the capacitor and like I say this what's nice about this is being able to uh, put a graduated charge in there so you know exactly how long it's going to go hooking it up now there's the red LED that it was in the constant current mode at 800 milliamps now it's dropped below that we can look at the red digits that's the capacitor voltage coming up 2.75 and there it is the blue light charge is finished at 2.77 we disconnect and we're ready to run it so that's how you work the field charger with the two 1300 lipos in this case that's half a dozen at least trips to the field with the with the capacitor planes so uh, it really it's, it's worth putting one together if, if you if you're interested in building one I'm gonna put a link in the text description below this video please go there check it out and and sign up an account with Banggood and use our link to get there and they'll give us some brownie points for you doing that we appreciate it and it won't cost you any more like I say this is about eleven dollars worth of equipment from Banggood uh, and everything else was in the junk box lipo packs that I already had kicking around and this works great and now Richie's gonna have one too so thank you very much for watching um, check the description below for those links to go check this out online uh, we're making this video here in June 2018 so those prices are effective as of now very inexpensive I don't know what will happen with the uh, any taxes or anything coming up but right now it's a it's a bargain and you'll be all done with buying those double-a alkalines thanks for watching everybody take care keep them flying guys